If you're thinking, but Ness, I've tried reels before and they don't work for me, then this video is for you. Hello everyone! Welcome to Our Business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. So a few months ago, I made a video about how to grow Instagram as an artist and that video caught fire <laughs> and got 36 thousand views since then. So clearly this is a topic that you're very, very interested in and I've been meaning to create another video going specifically more a bit deeper into reels in particular. Because on the last video I got a lot of comments about reels and most people had one of two issues. One, I've tried reels before and they don't work for me. Or two, my reels used to get tens of thousands of views and now I'm lucky if they get two or three thousand. So let's settle that second one first. Yes, reels have become less effective than a couple of years ago. And this is normal. At first, Instagram pushed their new shiny reel feature a lot to get it to catch on. As more and more people hopped on it and started making their own reels, it has now become a lot more competitive. A lot of people are making reels now, so it's a lot more difficult to get tons of views as it used to be. However, short video content still outperforms static content every time. If I look at my top content for a few recent months, you can see that almost all of it is reels. And there are two main reasons for this. First of all, Instagram is still pushing reels more than static content, maybe not as much as it used to, but still it favors it. And second, reels are just good content. People like them, people engage with them. So in general, they get more clicks than your static content. So in truth, even if one day Instagram stopped pushing all reels, it would still be a good idea to keep making them just because your followers will like them. Yes, it's going competitive out there for reels, but here's the thing, it's not going to get any easier going forward. The best time to start Reels was two years ago, but the second best time is now. It's only going to get tougher and tougher to get discovered on Instagram as time goes on. Which brings us back to the first point. Ness, I've tried Reels and it didn't work for me. So why could that be? Because it is getting more competitive, just making a Reel in and of itself isn't magical anymore. They have to be actually good content that people want to see and people want to engage with. The good news is we're artists, we're creative people, we think outside the box and we can make reels work for us. A couple of years ago when the reels first arrived, I was really, really resistant and really reticent to them. I was like, ugh, not one more thing that we have to do. But I have to say, once I got used to the idea and started creating my own, I've actually been having a lot of fun creating them and I wish that I'd started when they first came out. You don't have to do dances and you don't have to do cringy lip syncing and you don't even have to show your face if you don't want to. There are so many possibilities with reels. They're like a blank canvas and that's what we do best as artists. And if you don't like or don't enjoy the reels that you see on Instagram, make something better. So now I want to give you my top tips for what you can do to make better reels that perform better with the algorithm and that get more engagement. Let's get the most out of your reels and let's get those reels performing and working for you. So tip number one, give tips. How to content does extremely well on Instagram. It's helpful, so it's no wonder that people love it. People are also more likely to save a reel if it gives good tips because they want to reference it for later. And we know saves are not much better than likes in the algorithm. You don't have to full on teach like I do. You can just give some tips about what you're doing and what you know about. I know that you've learned a lot of things over the years about art and you've gotten a lot better and you can share some of that with your followers. You could talk about what kind of materials you like to use, the tips for drawing hands or shading or finding inspiration or how to clean your brushes, anything and everything. Are you wondering how in the world do I find my art style? Well, that's actually the wrong question to ask because we don't find our art style. We choose it. An art style is simply a series of choices. What kind of line work do you want to do? What kind of color palettes do you want to do? What kind of 
coloring, what kind of shading, what kind of eye style. All of these little things, all of these series of decisions make up your style. And so don't, don't try to find it hidden somewhere in the jungle. You're the one that creates it by choosing. Start with experimenting with different types. Let's say line work, different types of line, and then you choose one and you make all of those series of choices to come up with your art style. Good luck. On top of being super helpful for your followers, it also helps you build authority in your space, in your field. When you share your knowledge, you appear to be much more of an expert in your field. People looking for art services may find you through the tips that you give and decide that you're the person that they want to work with. Rather than working with the students, why not just directly work with the teacher? I've been very surprised since I started my YouTube channel, even though I create content solely for other artists, I've gotten so many requests for work from potential clients through YouTube, even though my videos aren't aimed at potential clients at all. I have a very popular pattern tutorial and I've had companies find this pattern tutorial when they're looking for how to make a pattern and then decide, you know what, instead of doing myself, I just want to hire her to do it. I've been really surprised how many opportunities have arise because of my YouTube channel because it wasn't the goal, but this is really powerful stuff. Tip number two, try trends. This is a way to create reels that both is very fun and actually makes it so easy. If you watch reels yourself on Instagram, sometimes you will find some repeating formats. Maybe they use the same audio or the same kind of transition or they have the same theme. A lot of times it invites people to share something relatable about their lives and the popular ones are adaptable to many different types of situations. You can put your own spin on it and that's what makes them go viral. So when you see a fun trend, try to think of ways to adapt it to your world and to what you do. There's almost always a way to make it work and put your own twist on it. So you just have to save the audio and then take your own video and put it all together using the same format. So it's so easy. Trends can also help make your work more discoverable. If there's a very popular trend that's going around, more people might see your work when you use that trend. Although I don't recommend to do just trends, every once in a while you want to mix it up, you want to do your own original content as well, but using some trends, sprinkling it in your content, that can be very helpful. I often use trends when I'm short on time just because they're really so easy and fast to make. Tip number three, try short reels. When I first started doing reels, I would just do face to camera videos because that's what I know. And I would just talk to my phone for one or two minutes. And I still do that sometimes, but I experimented with different formats and I discovered that shorter reels actually do better. Reels that are less than 15 seconds and even as short as five to seven seconds do extremely well on Instagram. They're fun and snacky, easy to watch, and the Instagram algorithm really rewards them because those reels often have a 100% watch time. Let me explain. In a longer one to two minutes video, some people will drop off in the middle if they decide that this isn't for them. However, if your reel is just five to seven seconds, people will watch the whole of it. In Instagram's eyes, a 100% completion rate on your reels is an extremely good grade that gives you a big boost in the algorithm. You can also create a short loop, you know, a little video that loops perfectly together. You just have to find a type of audio that loops and then people might watch your video three to four times in a row even. This also boosts your Reels grade. There are so many audios around that you can use that are very short and lend themselves to this type of very short, snacky content. And obviously, shorter Reels take less time to make as well, which is nice. Tip number four, use catchy audio. A real idea often comes from the audio as the starting point. It could be a catchy piece of music or maybe just a snippet of someone talking that has caught on and become a trend because it's very relatable. So browse the music tab in your Reel Creator to find some fun audios that you can use. You can also browse your Reel tab to get some ideas. 
If you find an audio that has a little arrow next to it, that means that it's a trending audio. Using trending audios can also help your reels perform better, although just like I said before, when using trends, just mix it up and don't just do trends. This audio, for example, was trending last year just before Christmas. With music, you could use the beats of the song or use a transition in the song and time your video to it to create all sorts of fun effects. For example, you could show a step-by-step -step process of your drawing by using a different beat of the song for each step. Or you could time different texts appearing on the screen to the beats. Just have fun with it. Tip number five, insert interesting text. A good caption full of information pairs really well with short reels and with our tip number one of creating helpful how-to content. If your reel is so short, you can use the reel itself almost just like a teaser and put all the actual how-to information in the caption. This keeps people on your reel watching multiple loops of it while they read your caption and they're also more likely to save it if the information is good and they want to reference it later. Crazy. Another take of this method is to create a loop using some very neutral, chill footage and add multiple tips or lines of text on the screen itself. The viewer will watch several loops of this reel while they're reading through all of that text. And they're also very likely to save it for later too. reel is very easy to make and devilishly effective. Tip number six, use hooks. The typical real consumer has very short attention span. And I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It's just, it's all about context, right? When you're swiping on your phone, looking at reels, you're doing that because you have a little idle minute. You have just a little minute of spare time and you're going to watch some reels. You're not sitting down to watch a two hour documentary. It's just not that kind of context. You don't have a long time to win them over. So you should tell them right away what's in it for them if they watch the reel. So go straight to the point and catch their attention with a strong hook. Five Fiber is horrible for illustrators, part one. Even a pause of a few seconds before the video or taking the time to say, hey guys, can actually lower your engagement. There are many different kinds of hooks that you can use. Here are some examples. It could be an eye-catching visual such as your art, for example. It could be a call to action such as Keep watching to find out why your art isn't selling. It could be a clear statement such as proof that talent is overrated or how to make a repeat pattern in Procreate. Just straight telling them what they're getting. It could be a fun transition. So for instance, if you find an audio that has a nice beat drop, etc. Transitions work really well, especially if it's a trend and people know it. So they will wait a second or two additional to see what the reveal is after the transition. Another thing you could do is an attention grabbing phrasing at the beginning. This can be either said out loud or just written on the screen. It could be something like quick reminder or attention artists, the secret to, or watch until the end to, or did you know that? Or this will blow your mind. There are so many different kinds. And if you're looking for more, just Google real hook ideas and you will find a ton. And tip number seven, mix it up. Don't get stuck doing just one thing, even if it works. After a while, it could really get boring for your followers. And if you're always doing the same thing, how do you know that there's not another format that can work even better? And if your reels aren't catching on yet, all the more reasons to experiment and find out what works best for you because it's all a little bit different for multiple people what works great for me might not work for you and vice versa as i said before at first i was doing a lot of face to camera reels 
And those were doing really well, much better than any static posts that I've been posting to my little account. But still, I continued to experiment and I found something that worked even better, shorter reels. Mixing it up also means that you don't have to do just reels. Static posts, even though they're not boosted quite as much, they still have their place, as well as carousels and stories. I encourage you to post a variety of contents, not just to get discovered, but so that your followers enjoy what you're putting out. And lastly, I want to talk about some tips for how to work around some of your preferences or needs. For instance, I often have people tell me, I don't want to show my face. I don't ever want to show my face. What can I do for a reel? And don't worry, you don't have to show your face. You can film anything that you like. So you can film your art. That's a really, really great way to do it. You can even talk over, you know, if you want to do tips, you can explain or talk about something, even something unrelated while you show a beautiful visual of you working on your art or flipping through your sketchbook or whatever you want. You can also use B footage so you can film anything. If you're going on a walk, you can just film uh, <laughs> everything that you're seeing on your walk or you can film out the window or anything that you like. A lot of the tips that I talked about today, like writing hooks and stuff like that on your videos and transitions and things like that, they can be used even if you don't show your face. I've also had people ask me what to do if I don't want to people to hear my voice. So for instance, if you have a stutter or thing like that and you don't want to talk on camera, that's okay too. There are a lot of reels that simply use music and written text. You don't have to speak at all. And you can also use text-to-speech tools. It's very popular on TikTok especially, but there are multiple of these tools that you can find online. So you get the little robot voice just saying your text. And since it's so common and popular on Reels content, you will not stand out. It will not seem weird. It's something that people do use a lot. So there we are. These were my Instagram tips for creating awesome reels. I really hope that it was helpful. I'm also going to offer you a little freebie that I developed for you. It's an Instagram grid template. So this is great to use to plan your weeks ahead on Instagram. I will leave the link below this video where you can go and download that if you would like. And in my last Instagram video, which I will also link, I did explain how to actually use this grid if you want some tips on how how to plan your content. So it was that video <laughs> in which I explained about tips to make your Instagram life better. But also if you don't like Instagram at all, and if you want to know if it's okay to not be on Instagram as an artist, check out that video where I talk about that. So that's it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.